That's, this is the greenhouse, episode 10. Let's go. We made it 10 episodes in, bro. Let's go. We made it 10 episodes in. Yeah. And yeah. we haven't incited a world war yet. No. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't been sued for libel or slander yet. <laughs> we haven't been majorly canceled yet. <laughs> The Greenhouse with Goodness and Vic. What a welcome to the Greenhouse. This is episode 10. I'm goodness. Ten. I'm goodness. Ten. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Goodness. Say goodness ten times. Goodness, 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 goodness. My name is Vic. That's this is the greenhouse episode ten. Let's go. We made it ten episodes in, bro. Let's go. We made it ten episodes in. Yeah. And we haven't incited a world war yet. No. Uh, we haven't. We haven't been sued for libel or slander yet. We. Haven't been majorly canceled yet. <laughs> well, there's no way they can cancel me. I, I, I fucking can't cancel myself. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, fuck, dude. I mean, I'm here. What's up? 10 that's episodes good, in, man. That's the good thing about a podcast is that no one owns us, you know? It's true. We, we own ourselves, you know? Exactly. If I don't feel like coming into work tomorrow, like, I ain't coming. That's it. But we kind of like this, you know? We work all week. We fucking. This, this is, is our a, refuge. This is our chance just to talk shit, reminisce, and drink. And drink. You know what I mean? Um, we got a nice bottle of Casa right Tell here. Tell us, this is dedicated. We got to. We got to say this on air. Who, who this is, is this a, dedicated this to? This is dedicated to my my pops, Gil C Romero, right here. This is one of his favorite tequilas, right here. R.I.P. And uh, you know, uh, I kind of like it myself too. And uh, this gives us a good excuse to just crack one of these bad boys up. Shout out to Bevmo for. Uh, um, being a part of the uh, COVID and <laughs> keeping social distance and being a jerk. Can you that- stand behind the fucking glass? <laughs> like, what the fuck? You, what were you bro? doing, fool? Were I you had a mask to, on. Did, did you jump no. over the, Dude, there the was nobody counter? In the, there was nobody in the fucking store. And I just went to pay with my card. And he was like, can you stand behind the glass? I don't like, know. Right, fool. Right, dog, right. I imagine you walking into Bedmo and you jump over the counter and you're just kind of like, hey, I'm looking for Casadores. And I'm like, get away from me. Yeah. Six feet. Fucking Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Mexican. I know. I, you I want tequila, get... right? <laughs> yeah. What do you want? Tequila? Do you want some Balanco? <laughs> Bud, Bud Light? <laughs> tequila? <laughs> <laughs> Shout yeah. out to Bud Light for being to, the unofficial sponsor of Mexicans. Bonds? <laughs> <laughs> no, Superior. <laughs> Gonzalez. Yeah. Go to fucking Tianguis. <laughs> what the fuck? I can't open this, bro. Oh, dale. We're here 10 episodes in, so in celebration, we're taking 10 shots. We're going to take 10 shots. Let me take, I think it's the mask. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this feels go. like it's the mask rips open the cap there with his go. teeth. <laughs> there you go. That's oh, dale. There's always a Mexican way to do shit. It always, it's always involves the teeth. <sighs> Look at this. Smell that shit. Well, smells it. like the tequila. Smells we're, potent. Yeah, and we're not gonna go. We, I chilled it. I put it in the freezer a little bit just to give it a nice little chill. Nice. Got not a little chill. No chill. Just a little chill. 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 But you know, um, a little chill. You know, no lime. We're gonna go straight. We're fucking we're going commando. Straight. We're going commando. We're going commando. We're raw dogging this raw right dog now. Raw dog this shit. No, yes, no. sir. No. Orale. We know what it tastes like. We don't need to hide it. Yeah. We know where we're going. We're going to Funky Town. Salud. Salud. To Gil C. Romero. Salud. And the ones that are not here no longer, I'll enjoy. Beautiful. Ah. Beautiful. Episode 10. Tastes like fucking... Tastes like Mexican freedom. Tastes like tequila, Mexico. (laughs) It's, um... Tastes like the sweat of a migrant worker. (laughs) Tastes like the fields of Central California. (laughs) Yeah, it it tastes like Salinas, California. (laughs) Why did I think everything for Selena is off the top of my head? And then I thought, como la flor. And then yeah. I thought, tastes like como la flor. Yeah, tastes like, <laughs> like a flower. Tastes Plastic. like Juan Gabriel. Yeah. <laughs> it tastes like Walter Mercado's paint sweat. 
<laughs> it tastes like Huerta <laughs> Mercado having sex with the wind. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Uh, we, he can literally do that. He just pops like fucking, you know, seven fucking Viagras and just fucking just makes... Just goes it, at it. Just goes, goes to town. Goes to town. <laughs> just humping fucking the Santa Ana winds. The Santa Ana winds. <laughs> Those things get aggressive, bro. That's wild. He's really taming the beast single handedly. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're only one shot in, you guys. So you know where this is going to go. Uh, episode 10. We are talking all things COVID the last couple episodes, all things quarantine, because we've been in quarantine for it's what feels long. like two and a half years. And the, the world's not over yet, but it, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's, it's not. The world is not over, but it's going to happen. Yeah. So. I'm just, I just want. Like we had mentioned in the last episode, I just want the aliens to come through already and just be like, ha ha, fuckers, we got you. We got you. We'll fix this, I guess. I guess. They're not going to fix this shit. They, you know what they're going to do is they're going to fucking kill us all, dude. <laughs> gonna, Why are the aliens going to be bad, They're going to save like, they're gonna save like a couple people to run tests on us and that's it. But most, 95% of us are going to be fucking How about if they're like dust. chill ass, how about if they're chill ass aliens like Independence Day? Chill. Nah, I, don't, I doubt it, bro. I doubt it. They want. They want our resources. There's some kind of. They want our gold. That's it. They're What's just, our gold? They're just gonna go to Pentagon or wherever the fucking. What is it called? Fort Knox or what is it called? <laughs> and Area Fifty One. And, and they're and they're just gonna take back their homie that they, we have over there, fucking. <laughs> and a He's fucking, like, I'm here for Pedro. For 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 Maldahide and fucking. <laughs> Take him out. I'm here for Pedro. <laughs> I'm here for Pedro. Uh, Pedro X. <laughs> and um, fucking. It's like Latinx, but Pedro yeah, X. Like, well, well, why do you think fucking illegal a- alien came from, dog? Oh, we fucking aliens, listen. <laughs> Conspiracy facts. Paisa Paisa facts. <laughs> <laughs> We're the real aliens. We're bro. the real aliens, yeah, bro. Yeah, Those we, are our people. Can't kill us. We, we, we don't die. We multiply. <laughs> we just breed. Oh, my God. Wait, okay. Speaking of Independence Day and aliens. Species. Movies. Species was based on Mexico. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. Buy <laughs> <Bicep> facts. <laughs> movies. Movies. There's, there's, people are, are now consuming more quote unquote content than ever. This is why we have so many thousands of viewers watching our, our stuff right now. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, just like, uh, you know, fucking Napster and fucking streaming took over music. I think now everybody's been forced to not having to go to concerts, one. Go to the movie theaters. So now they're watching streaming concerts, right? So right. now they're connected to some kind of fucking app or some kind of scene on the computer, right? Yeah. And no one's really going to movie theaters anymore, so now they could just stream the movies yeah. or get some kind of network that shows those movies that they want to watch. So movie theaters, concert venues are pieced out. And now people are trying to enjoy entertainment from the comfort of their homes. And they're getting used to it. Yeah. So, like, so it's like Netflix, fucking, this is why, you know, HBO Max, Netflix, Hulu, YouTube TV, Roku. Shout uh, out to Behind the Scenes Network. Showtime, Behind the Scenes Network. All these things, all these places where you can just consume new content. But I, I, I want to talk movies. Let's talk movies this episode. Yeah, movies. Uh, for sure. Movies, man. What movies have you been watching since quarantine? And I watch a girl. I've, Fucking watch a lot of movies. I've watched a grip of movies. I watched a grip of movies, and I think I I kind of went through a couple different phases because if you remember in the beginning of quarantine, the big thing was the Last Dance and Tiger King, right? Right. It was the it was the shows. There were these sh- these limited series shows that were put out, and then I jumped into for some fucking reason I jumped into a bunch of A twenty four movies. Right. So all these independent movies, right? All the stuff mm-hmm. with. Um, some of them were not great, but some, some of them were not great, but a lot of them were really good. Yeah, you know, that was really the good. Uncut Gems. That was Uncut Gems was hereditary, dude. Like literally, how how long didn't you feel like you needed to take a shit the whole movie? Like it was just dude, so intense. Like I the, have not. I mean, I straight. I'm sure I had a sore jaw just from clenching my teeth from the entire time. Oh my god, dude! Uh, was it Adam Sandler? Yeah. Adam Sandler played a fucking great fucking That was an jeweler. amazing movie. Like, it's just a degenerate overall. Like, yeah. Like, I love that about people. Because there's people, there's, I know people like that. Who just kind of go crazy and wild they and They just can't the help themselves, bro. Really? They just fucking can't help themselves and they just keep going and going. And, and you know, they're, 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 they're really good people somehow, but there's like a fucking itch that they can't mm. scratch. 
or they're trying to scratch. There's just no satisfaction. Satis- it's like they're, they have, they're, they're like satis- they have like faction. a fucking mental athlete's foot. You know what I mean? Wow. You know what I mean? You know, and they just keep scratching and scratching and scratching, and they know it, they're not supposed to scratch because it makes it worse. And you're watching it. the movie. You're especially for Uncut yeah. Gems, and I mean these. Let's we should talk about the best movies to watch during quarantine. I mean Uncut Gems. If you haven't seen it. Go watch, watch that, that shit. shit. That's just fucking Watch that fire. shit, but like go potty before. Take yeah, a shit. Yeah, take a shit. Go like, restroom before. <laughs> take, take a fucking... Because you're clenching every part of your body throughout the whole two hours or whatever. Yeah, pretty good. It's pretty good. But it's it's crazy because... And this is... There are no spoiler alerts for this one and for anything else. We'll, we'll be mm. good, trying good about holding on spoiler alerts. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alerts. La, 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 la. Spoiler alerts. La, la, la. And... and Talk more about how the how throughout the whole movie you just are consistently saying that's a bad idea, that's a bad that's idea, a bad idea. <laughs> that's a bad idea, and yet it keeps happening. <laughs> how does this guy get deeper and deeper and deeper? And once you, once you, and then the, the, the crazy about the movie was what I liked about the movie is that once you thought he was like, oh, like he made it, like he just ended up doubling down. The whole movie. I'm not gonna explore it, but hey, watch yeah. that movie. It's great. Watch it. But what? you know, <clears throat> any. Uh, Hey, did you watch any classics during the quarantine? What did I watch that was a classic? I watched Coffee and Cigarettes, mm. which was like that's a, such a you movie to watch, bro. Like, <laughs> oh, that like come on, bro. Like, it's all fucking. All right, like, give me some classics. Then. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, I, I'm interested, but I'm just saying okay. that's such that's so you though. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dissing <laughs> it. You movie to I'm not watch. dissing it, but you're. I know you're really art. You know, you're really like. I would say uh, you're like like you know you're 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 a punk, and that's like a punk movie, you know. Yeah, kind of, yeah. pretty much. It's You're right. You're not, You're not wrong. You're not well, wrong. The girl's all gothic and shit in the movie. Right? <laughs> kinda... I just love that concept. I actually started working yeah. on writing a screenplay as just a hobby with a friend of mine. Right. And we were doing research, and that's kind of, it's basically coffee and cigarettes, but turn it Latino. Nice. And like a similar type of style. Maybe like, like, well, uh, cafe con leche y frajos. Oh my gosh, that would be so on the nose. Imagine. I, I mean, I started watching a bunch frajos of movies. Frajos y fucking um, chocolate de la abuelita, or what? Basically, <laughs> choco y churro. <laughs> it's in. We, I started watching a bunch frajos of movies. Frajos and from vatos. Frajos y vatos. That's the name of my next restaurant. <laughs> I, and I think I think that was that was why I started watching a bunch of movies, and that's why I started watching A twenty four movies because they're all you know uh, I think Honey Boys an A twenty four movie, Lady Bird, mm. uh, Florida Project or something like that. So they're all just kind of like independent. I like like independent kind of dramas, and well, psychological well, thrillers. Well, that that's kind of what you know. I mean, it's pushing it even further um, when all these networks, these streaming networks, are looking for content. So they're opening the doors to a lot of young writers. A lot of young producers to put out their content, if yeah. it's you know, and if they have the you know right actor in the movie or whatnot, you know, it's pretty. It's not that hard to get on Netflix. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's 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 become much easier. It's become more. You don't have to suck all kinds of dick or something like that. You know, like they fucking becoming. You know, well, people are always talking about like, how do you make it in Hollywood? Get on your knees, baby. Jesus. Like, like you know, what I mean, like you don't have like some douchebag fucking, you know, gatekeeper trying to fucking. Some Harvey Weinstein shit. Yeah, I don't know. We once mentioned some shitty ass people. How about you? How about you? What are, What are some movies you've been watching? Man, you know what? Like, dude, you know, a lot of movies that I didn't see, I haven't seen on HD that I was able to see, to stream. You know, like you know, uh, fuck a lot of like fucking Van Damme movies. You know, <laughs> like fucking Bloodsport and fucking Kickboxer and. Wait, are are sports drama movies? A genre that you really like? Well, like no, it was, it was, it, dude, you gotta understand, in the 80s, you know, fucking Kung Fu was still real to us. It wasn't some fucking magical shit before. Like, it was before MMA, so, like, there was a fucking nostalgic, t- nostalgia to Kung Fu and karate. So, like, to be able to, like, Go, you know, learn karate and and finally be able to kick a See, fucking like Bruce Lee a, a fucking like, a, a a group of people's asses supposedly. Like, right. but you know, in real life, you would have fucking got your ass kicked regardless. <laughs> because there's like six people chasing <laughs> you in an alley and you yeah. beat them all up. Yeah, with like there's arts. no way you're gonna do that shit. I mean, like, salut. But salut. Um, you know, but so to me that salut. Um, you know, the Karate Kid, Back to the Future. You know, what I mean. A lot of, That's funny because that was such a big part of movie yeah. culture in the eighties, huh? It was. Uh, I mean, Bruce Lee was, you know, had just passed away, and then the the the, 
the success that he had kind of carried on to a lot of different artists, you know, um, you know, actors, you know, like Steven Seagal, Chuck Norris, you know. Yo, remember all the Chuck Norris jokes? Oh, yeah, Delta Force. Delta <laughs> Force. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, for a while, long time. I, that I was a big thing. Social media, like. Yeah. Basically, the reason, you know, the reason why World War II started is because Chuck Norris was an idea. A baby idea, yeah. you know. That's why Chuck, the World War Two started. Yeah. You know the reason. The reason why the Cold War ended is because Chuck Norris sneezed. Yeah, some yeah. shit like that. There's, <laughs> there's a bunch of them like that. Like, yeah. But Delta Force, uh, all those movies, uh, fucking, you know, all the fucking Sylvester Stallone movies from Blood. Uh, what's it called? Blood. Was it Bloodsport? No, no, not Bloodsport. Not Bloodsport. Uh, um, I mean Rocky. Um, First Blood. What was it? Uh, Command. What was it? Um. Fucking Rambo. Rambo. Fucking Rambo. Fucking Rocky. Fucking Over the Top. Fucking, fucking Kurt Douglas. Not Kurt Douglas. Uh, Russell. What's that guy's name? Kurt Russell. Fucking Tango and fucking Cash. <laughs> Woo! If you don't know about Tango and Cash, and you're, you're you're you have a young kid, you better sit down and watch fucking Tango and Cash and Over the Top. Sit down and do them. it. Watch Over the Top. Such a fucking hard felt movie about a truck driver trying to get his son back from his rich fucking grandpa <laughs> that of dying can- mom cancer and so he used his fucking arm wrestling to win his son back wait it's so awesome. sports dramas are totally <laughs> your favorite types of movies i love it i love it i love i love the inspiration i love like the the the, the, the never giving up type of mentality I yeah love that, and know? the the Perseverance, the resilience, the resilience. So, like, yeah. you know, getting kicked in the floor and then kicking back up, and then getting back up, and, 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 and becoming just, the champion. You know, yeah. Yep. Like, yeah, I watched this. Like, even it's not really a sports movie, but I watched this fucking cheesy ass movie that my wife, that I mean, I watched growing up, and my wife, my wife kind of brought it back to my attention. Was uh, girls just want to have fun? Yeah. <laughs> this was Sarah, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, and and it's about her with the fucking strict dad. And she wouldn't let her, you know, he wouldn't let her go out. So he, w- she would have to sneak out to be part of this dance competition. And then she ended up making it to the finals. And her dad fucking saw her on TV and went to the movie studio and actually saw her perform. And, like, gave her the fucking thumbs up. Like, go ahead and dance, girl. Like, you're really <laughs> you good. You do it, girl. I, almost cr- I cried. I cried. I literally uh, cried. I was like, oh, my God. I got a little cholo tear coming down. Cholo, just the single <laughs> tear? Yeah, yeah. I just saw Sarah just fucking with her fucking foot face. <laughs> um, fucking overcome, you know, her daddy issues, you know? Oh, my God. That was such a snide comment of Sarah Jessica Parker, bro. <laughs> what did she do to you? Why'd she hurt she, you? Because I've never seen that family guy where they say that her face yeah, looks like a fucking foot. And they always, they always impersonate her. My, my girlfriend watches a lot of Sex in the City, so oh, I yeah. see Sarah Jessica Parker a lot. Man, that literally like, ruined a generation of women. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, like... <laughs> right? Am I no right? No comment, bro. Dude, oh, no, my I God. Bro, like everybody's like waiting for Mr. Big. That fool was never showing up, bro. He never did, bro. Like he came and he left again. How do you know all this about <laughs> Six in the City? Cause, I mean, I don't know. I'm fucking reruns. You're a Renaissance man. I'm a Renaissance man. I fucking I have a soft spot, you know, for for intellectual an intellectual soft humor, soft comedies, romantic, and all that stuff. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fucking softy. I'm a I'm a romantic um, cholo. Wait, so what are some movies to watch during quarantine? Uncut Gems for sure. Uncut Gems. Go watch that. Um, over the Top? Over the Top. Uh, uh, you if know. you haven't seen any of Rocky, All the Rockies. All the Rockies. All the Rockies. All the Rockies. Watch Rockies. Them. If you have a son, yep. watch All the Rockies. Definitely. He'll like it. He'll, all the Star it. Wars? Oh, for sure. All the Star Wars. I mean, Disney right now Plus? is the perfect time for any uh, Binge watch them trilogy and then, or whatever. And then go on Google and then figure out how to watch them in Chronicle. Chronological yeah, yeah, because you because we you know it kind of went backwards. Well, now you even have for Star Wars, you have what's the Mandalorian? Yeah, right. You have that whole whatever Boba Fett story. Or Boba, it? It's not even Boba Fett, but Boba it's the same kind of, race of, kind of people. Same, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's crazy. There's there's a lot you can watch there. Uh, yeah, you could, you could definitely watch. Uh, what, what another stuff? There's a lot of stuff. Um, I mean, if you haven't seen, I actually just watched recently "Tu Mama También." Tu Mama That's también. a really good movie. Yep. Um, a lot of um, Latin American or Mexican movies that are out there right now too. Um, yeah, some amazing filmmakers. Some Pedro like, Infante movie that's yep. really good. I saw. I, I rewatched the Cantinflas movie. Nice. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of good things out there. Do a lot of dope fucking documentaries about food. Yep. Like all those little those uh, the the. the 
the street food documentary. All the Latin stuff that American. they got, yeah, like highlighting different areas. <sighs> Amazing. Ooh, if anyone doesn't inspire you to fucking make food or like, you Nothing know, make, make a fucking bologna, like a, a bologna sandwich that you've never seen <laughs> out of your own, the comfort of your own the home. The secret <laughs> to bologna is frying it. <laughs> Just like the secret to anything. You know what I mean? Like, you'll be like, oh, you'll watch one of those fucking episodes and make a fucking, you make a fucking. The best sandwich you've ever made in your life. You'll make a fucking. Fucking Monte Cristo fucking <laughs> burger. A media noche. <laughs> <laughs> That's I mean, there's so much to watch out there, but check those out. Go through and 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 if you ha- like the sports drama stuff, if you like more of like the international dramas, I watched a ton of psychological thrillers because I don't know, I was going into deep dark crevices of my right. mind trying to get mind fucked basically. Right. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on there, and obviously there's so many streaming services now. Share a login with six people, and right. <laughs> you can pay no. like two dollars. For sure, no, it's, yeah. it's the best. Um, you know, and uh, the only thing I don't like about it is that you have to have all the the servers to watch the movies that you want to watch. Like, yeah. Yeah. They like to watch different places. Yeah. They're on different places. They all have rights, but, but eventually you'll end up on Netflix for some reason. Like a lot of people, <laughs> like, you there's know, so much there, like the, the, the 24 seven, you know, at first it was, it was on ESPN. Yep. Now it's on Netflix. Yep. And, uh, last dance, uh, the last dance. Uh, same deal. Same deal. Wait, so tell me, not 24 seven. It wasn't last dance, but the, was tell me about the golden age of Mexican cinema. Because you know a lot about this, and you were actually telling me a ton about this, and I actually think this is really interesting as we're kind of talking more through what we were, our topic today, because in general, I think that there's, this is something that's not super highlighted, and it, it was such a big part of cinema for, peop- for our people, for our, our race, of ethnicity, whatever you want to call it. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I love movies, you know? I'm a big movie guy, and uh, I really, my goal is to, you know, produce and write movies and stuff, and, you know, when I get older, that's what I, I want to wake up in the morning and write a script, you know? Yep. Or write a song, you know. That's that's kind of my goal. Uh, that's my my long term job. Um, <clears throat> and um, but um, growing up, you know, my dad and I and my family would watch these old movies on TV, these black and white movies, you know, from the fifties. Um, you know, it was called the uh, Cine de Oro. You know what I mean? Um, it was movies like with Cantin Flas. It was with Pedro Infante, Tintan, and all these beautiful, like amazingly. And it was like t- toe to toe with you know American Hollywood movies. You know what I mean? If not even better. If not better, exactly. And a lot of the you know <clears throat> German filmmakers. And I think I saw a little bit of clips of that when I was watching the the movie on, on Cantin Flas when everything kind of like moved to Hollywood mm. and. They just left Mexico in the dust, and they never been able to catch up since. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, um, but it's, it's funny because a lot of the greatest actors were Mexican, right? Uh, from that era, and to now be in 2020, we're barely getting a, 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 some Mexican, you know, film writers and actors and producing their own films. Like it took us almost what 60 years, 70 years to kind of start being in films and now how we were talking about like you know Mexicans don't even play Mexicans in movies you know yeah, like, exactly. it's like it's like it's kind of weird but at the end of the day like we don't really trip on the shit like that you know no cuz it's i think it all comes down to talent you know right. what i mean that's number one that's the biggest thing and right. and really being able to as best as possible convey what you're trying to say do you, you under, do, you, do you know what it is i think also bro i don't really think that mexican people think they could be Actors mm. until recently. Mm, interesting. Uh, I think the theory to me is that, like, because I grew up, and if I told my mom I wanted to be an actor, my dad, or, or I can imagine my dad telling his dad that he wanted to be an actor, they'd be like, get the fuck out of here, bro. Like, get yeah, a real I fucking mean, that's, job. That's like saying Go you're going to be an artist or a yeah. musician or yeah, something. Yeah, like, right? they would be like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Like, go right. get a job. So, how are you gonna, you're not going to be able to feed your kids with movies, you know? Right. You know what I mean? So, it's like, is that a, a U.S. Latino thing or Latinx thing? No, it's a, no, no. I think that's a, that's that's from Mexico, Mexico, Mexico. Okay. Because it's different. Mm. I think I, yeah, an immigrant from Mexico is a lot different from a lot of other immigrants because I think when you come from Mexico as an immigrant, you know that you might never see your family ever again. You're you're making an entire investment to change your life for ever, um, drastically forever. You're starting all over again. Yeah. And. You know, and I have so many people that I know that haven't seen their moms and dads for 12 years, yeah. 15, 20 years, and all they, they, they all they are is uh, maybe a fucking 
couple hundred bucks every month. Yeah. That's all they are to their family. Yeah. And that was, and that's all they could actually do to show that they love their family because they'll never be able to hug them. Yeah, you're not physically there. You're not going to be able to see them grow right. up, um, help them. Yeah. You know, um, and it's a big, it's a big dilemma. And I think that it, 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 there's a lot of different effects that long-term effects from that. Um, and and that that plays into potentially how that cultural role has an impact mm-hmm. on the amount of people who, amount of Mexicans, Latinos, Latinxes, people who are in the film industry, right? But I think so. In so, so what I'm saying, you're in a casting agency, right? right. You're in the parts place for a Mexican, right? Right. You have a fucking real Mexican here that doesn't really believe in himself, right? Right. Or you have some fucking you know, New, new, or just new made, Zealander that can fucking act his ass off. You know what I mean? Who, who are you going to hire? Who looks Mexican enough <laughs> yeah. and can play the role really well. Like, who are you going to hire? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, to be honest with you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know I what mean, I mean? I don't know. Is, is that the real truth? Or is it racism? What is it? Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's a little bit of both. Mm. And I think it might be a little bit more of like, we just need some really good Mexican actors. Yeah. They really believe in themselves. Well, and like you and, said, and go for it. And you know in, the, in the scene of the Ordo, the scene of the Ordo times, it's like that was empowering an area. Well, the arts to do that. The well, arts the, in general, right? People, people. Well, it comes from hard times, hardship. Right. You know, everybody knows that hardship brings you know art. You know, mm-hmm. street, it comes in the street food. It comes in, you know, you know, music. From, where music if you if it comes, you know, from the, visual the fields, arts, whatever, you know, yeah. like everything, like all that stuff that people work, you know, the singing in the fields, all that yeah. stuff, like. That comes, you know, you could feel the, the passion in the music. You, you create styles out of pain, you know what I mean? Right. I mean, when you, when you write, you, you write about a breakup. You write about someone you lost. You, yeah. You know what I mean? It's never just like, uh, like hardly, you know, where, where you get your inspiration from. It's like, how do you make a diamond, you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you a diamond in the rough type situation, right? Know, but because how do you make you... a diamond, though? You fucking crush rocks together, you know what I yeah. mean? Under For massive you. amounts of pressure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, you crush rocks <laughs> in the massive amounts. Was it rocks? Or stones or whatever, sand, sand or whatever. I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway, bicep facts. <laughs> bicep facts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but under massive amounts of pressure, that's how you get diamonds. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Exactly. And For sure. So I think that, that that's a big that, that's a big deal. I think that plays in a role with it. But uh, but man, the fact that we can do it, let's do it, man. Let's we're here. Do it. I think let's we're just we're, we're 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 everybody's we're we're we're. We're the we're co- we're coming we're coming we're coming as a nation. We're coming for you. We're coming as a nation. So. We, in general, I think there's a lot of different interests that you and I have in the in film and movies and that whole style in general. So, mm-hmm. I I think it'd be really funny to think about one really horrible movie that you've seen and why you think it's so bad. Oh wow, there's a couple of them. I mean, like uh, the one, just one that comes to mind. Man, no. Well, it was a John Clyde Van Damme movie. Well, he was actually the the main star. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, no retreat, no surrender. <laughs> oh my God, that movie is horrible. <laughs> Why? But, but, it, but when I watched it when I was a little kid, I was so inspired by it. But when I watch it now in HD, I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck was I thinking when this movie? And like, what? It doesn't even make sense, bro. Like, <laughs> it's so dumb. It's like, ugh, I love it. But wait, what did you love about it, and what do you hate about it now? What I what I love about it is that like I can narrate it now and <laughs> you like, like know it from yeah, the beginning to end and like I know I know what's gonna happen and it's kind of funny, but what I don't like about it is just like this it's never gonna happen like Bruce Lee is never gonna come in like his ghost is not gonna come and show you karate <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? like you know what I mean like you're like I wish <laughs> you know what I mean like it was hilarious dude and it's just the cheesiest acting in it. And the way like his dad played a horrible act, it was just it was just cheesy, you know. Just the special effects too, like in a lot of old movies too, like it's so bad. Like bad, like you know, as would I mentioned, um, was it uh, Kurt Russell, um, Big Trouble in Little China? Mm. What a fucking great movie growing up. Right. But you watch it now, like, you're like special, what the special fuck, fuck is fuck this? Going yeah, <laughs> what Dude are you laser. doing? It would have been better if you just didn't include any of that at yeah, all. Yeah, but, but that was also but such a are, huge thing, right? That was such a monumental thing to yeah. see. Even some of the early special effects in Star Wars, right. where you're like, "Whoa, this is so bad." Yeah. But then yeah. you're like, "Oh well, you know, at the time it was a big deal." Fucking yeah, I love it. The worst movie I've ever seen is this movie called Wasop Rockers, and it's about these kids. 
And I think they're they're part skaters, but they're also in like the rock scene. I thought it was tight. I thought it was gonna be cool because the concept of the movie was super awesome, and it was yeah. very close to kind of where I grew up, right? Like the hardcore punk scene and, and the San Gabriel Valley, and you know skaters and all that stuff. But it was the worst movie I've ever seen. It was trying way too hard. It was like Latino rockers. It was like hey, fool you a rocker type situation, <laughs> and it was just like way too ridiculous. And I remember people talking about like, oh, you know, it's such an movie to watch I'm like no it's fucking garbage it's the worst music yeah. movie I've ever seen it's not even ironically good yeah. it does, it's, doesn't even have any semblance of being a good movie it's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life but you know when I grew up in an era when it was like hot boys you know like right. like they get the, the most handsome fucking actors and they put them in a cast together you know yeah. like Lost Boys you know, like, like Young Guns like right. they get all the hot young studs yeah, you know, and they would put them in a fucking movie together, and they would make a fucking movie, and right. like they were good actors, and they would and make, that's all you needed to do. Yeah, because exactly. they just look good, right? Yeah, and you're like yeah. all the girls would go as the girls wanted to go. You fucking you have a date now. Yeah, and if it was a scary movie, I mean, you know, you'd get you know to like hug her or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Is that a real thing? Like, oh, oh we get to cuddle up because yeah, she's she gets scared. scared. She's gonna grab onto me. Oh my know? god, that's so funny. That's so traditional. <laughs> that's so traditional. You guys just swipe right now, swipe left. Yeah, They're you like, tell me, you tell me. I get all the details in the Hitter. palm of my hand of everything I need to know about Hitter a person. Hit it or quit it. That's it. And can decide whether or not I want to pursue further. I'm a fucking romantic, bro. I'm so, I fucking... I can uh, be romantic. You're, no, you're not romantic. I, I, can be, like, I can be romantic and swipe like, left. Like, like uh, you guys are like... Those yeah, two do not like, we, mutually we, exist. We, we, would be, we would be so romantic back in the day. We would be with people for years that we don't belong with. Like, you guys, <laughs> the only reason... That like, doesn't mean romantic. That's stupid. Yeah, I know. But, like, you guys would be like... Like, we know it's not going to work out, but it's cool for now, and it fucking works, so yeah. I'm going to stay with her. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> I've been there. It's cool for now. I've been there. It's like... like we wouldn't a, even say that. A we'll cool thing like, to I experience. I fucking love her, but I hate her. Hey, fool, you know what, fool? <laughs> fuck, she's the love of my life for right now. I'm going to ride for her, dog. <laughs> but um, but uh, you guys would be like, oh, you know what? It's not really working, but it's cool for now. <laughs> I know it's not going to work out. And you guys are having a mutual understanding about it. Like, it's so weird. Like I come communication. From era, I come from an era from like a girl would like even though she knows she doesn't belong with you, she's gonna fucking make it seem like she does, and she's gonna make your life fucking a living hell <laughs> and, until you just say no more. This all came from the movies of back <laughs> in the day, bro. This all came from movies from the '90s and '80s. That's what happened. That's what fucked you up. Yeah, it is. I fucking, I guess. Yeah. I came from the the movies of uh, Ten Things I Hate About You and um, what is it called? The basically all the movies of the thousands and nineties that were all about like jumping from person to person. Yeah, you guys, you guys are so <laughs> promiscuous. Ooh, promiscuous. Yeah. This week we got a bunch of amazing artists that we're gonna be featuring as usual Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Be sure to turn on, tune on in. Be sure to check out all our socials on Tuesday. We got Coco Torres doing Melaquelo Mirando. <laughs> Tell us about that, man. Coco Torres, shout out to Colombia. One of the, one of a dope ass accordion player singer, he's got like a party vibe, with the traditional sound, um, and he's creating his whole sound right now. And it's also like I mean, so the last thing we saw Coco Doors do that we featured was oh, the yeah. accordion. Accordion. He right? did. He did that in uh, what a shot in the dark. Yeah, and so now it's another shot in the dark, I believe. It was the same shot in the dark. Same. So we, we found we we featured him in. Let Love Lead the Way. Let Love Lead the Way. Let Woo! Love. We're yeah. featuring Coco Torres for the first time now, but we had him. He was a feature in Let Love Lead the Way. And in general, I mean, just doing something super special. Because how much do you actually see with an accordion nowadays that's, like, modern? Nah. I mean, you know, Q Urkel right here. <laughs> that's the kind of impression that you had of an accordion. Or Ramon Ayala. Yeah. Which is awesome. Pretty fucking badass. Which is amazing. Yeah. But it's just very Me not our generation. Leo. But like me the connection between Mexico and fucking Colombia. Yep. There's actually a movie on Netflix. Speaking of movies, I forgot what it's called. Um, um, what's the name of the movie from Netflix? Put it right here. Um, ya no estoy aquí. Ya no estoy aquí. Yep. Ya no estoy aquí. I just watched that too. And then they, it's about Colombian cumbias. It's about it's cumbias about remix with the K, and they slow it down. They slow it down, oh, and they fucking dance to it. It's so good because he's just like, and he does the estrella. Because the cinco puntos, bro. Estrella with cinco puntos. That yeah. that thing is actually it's that's like, actually a really good movie. Like, Definitely watch that. It's like a Colombian music, cumbias, dance, and gang culture all yep. mixed in one. All mixed cartel, together, you know. 
all mixed together. And how he had to flee from the Mexico to save his family. It's some crazy shit. It's amazing. Actually, so check that out. Ya no estoy aquí. Ya no estoy aquí. But on Tuesday, Shot in the Dark, Coco Torres, it's out of this world. So you got to scope it out. And it's a different take on, a, on an accordion, which I think traditionally has been an instrument that's not cool or not whatever. Hit, yeah. You know? He's getting the bitches. <laughs> Solely with the accordion. He's getting the bitches. That who's standing outside of someone's house with the accordion Right and just like he's like he's like he's like the Luis Miguel of accordions right yeah. now. Low key, that's a statement right there. Quote <laughs> us, quote us. Watch, couple mm-hmm. years from now, we are the we yeah. said it here first. Yeah. Salud. And he gets the respect from all the Latinos and everything, all the Mexicans too. Colombians, salud. Fucking Mexicanos, all of them. <sighs> Wednesday we got a top so soil good. with Afro. This is a special one. Afro, we all know Afro, and he's a 98 freestyle. 98 freestyle, Big Al's one of the dopest freestyles ever to play on the radio. Shout out to the Wake Up Show. Shout out to um, you know um, all the radio shows that back in the days in the 90s and early 2000s that played the future this song when freestyling was really huge on the radio and underground hip hop. I mean, Big Al, R.I.P. was a legend in New York, and this song right here and the way he put his twist on it is very special and we're so glad to have him perform and we're yep. looking for more artists like afro to come and do some stuff like that for shine in the darks and for uh what's this the live at grow town yeah it's a top soil what's the top soil top soil whatever because not a lot of people do this type of um uh, covers for raps you know what i mean usually yep. when they do a cover for raps they try to like Either sing like a, a like a fucking you know ironic twist, right? Put an ironic twist on a, a song that's yeah, pop culture, yeah, whatever. I mean, or whatever you know, and yeah. they're trying to sing it, or yeah. they'll rap fucking two live crew or some shit like right. that. Right. Like a, I like <laughs> big butts or <laughs> some shit like that. You know what I mean? Like all stupid. They're international, but to take a serious there. song, a serious MC, and then do it just as dope, or if not better, killed it. Killed it. It's so good. Afro's amazing and. This cover is special because it's it's Big L and it's someone who you pioneered for such an early age, you know. Yeah, I love that shit. I mean, as far as Big L, R.I.P. Man, he would have been a legend to this day. Um, he still is, but I mean, even the fact that he he was only like a a couple years in the game where people actually knew that he existed, and and you know we lost him so quick. To his, for if you say Big L, people know who that is. You know, yep. I mean, to this day. So I mean, hip hop. That's hip hop right there. Let's go. Shout out to New- NYC. That's that's digging in the crazy crew right there. Speaking of DITC from two episodes ago, you know that's another that's another uh, rollback. That's two another episodes. that's another uh, person from the DITC crew right there. That yes, sir. nothing but fire spitters. You know Lord Finesse, fucking you know uh, you know Diamond D, fucking you know uh, uh, everybody in that group is just fucking ridiculous. Yes, OC. Sir. Fucking just everybody in that group is just ridiculous MCs, conscious rap, real lyricists. You know, Big Al was the goat at that time. So for from coming from an era uh, of those type of pioneers, and then for them to champion this guy or actually put him in the front and say, "Yeah, you like us, but check out this young buck, mm. Big, Big Al." Man, what a what a blessing and an honor. But so sad that he left so early. You know. Yep. So shout out to Afro for doing that cover. It's a really yeah. good one. So scope it out on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we got James Longstreet doing Barroom. Oof. And this is some country. country. And, and I love it because yeah. you don't get a chance to hear a lot of good country. It's all very, it becomes very stereotypical or archetypical. Um, gracias. And Nashville, Tennessee, baby. He's from Nashville, Tennessee. And it's twangy. It's the got same that bourbon. southern feel. It's, it's the, yep. The same bourbon. This is tequila, but. but it's close enough. But it's close enough. It's brown, and he kills it. He, I mean, he, he really embodies kind of the, the spirit of true country, of, of that, that singer-songwriter, the approach to the lyricist, a lyricism, a kind of approach to really embodying that sound and that style, you know? And apparently he was a, a fun fucking time to have in the studio, too. Oh, yeah, and he, he's coming over here to get it. He came to, the, to L.A. To, to, to follow his dream. I mean, fortunately, you know, he got COVID and everything like that, but... He's out here hustling. He's a beautiful songwriter, beautiful singer, musician, guitar player. Can't wait to hear more of him. Um, and he's a good friend. You know, he, he still keeps in touch with us. So, awesome. So let's, you know, I would love to keep building that that uh, connection with him because he's an amazing artist, you know. Yes, sir. So check that out. Thursday, it's Shot in the Dark with James Longstreet. Longstreet. We got, we got a lot of amazing Longstreet artists all across the boards. 
every single genre, every single style. Yeah. We're not just one. We're not, we're not one stop shop. We're, we're everything. We're, we're, it's not about, you know, trap music. It's not about funk music. It's about good music. Good music. And we, we're all growing here. And we're here. Salute to good music. Salute. And, I think it's time. It's time for that. Dick of the week. So, Shia LaBeouf is in a new movie. Yeah. Shia LaBeouf is in a new movie called The Tax, the Tax Collector. Collector. And he's been getting all this beef for, for supposedly brownface for for acting like a, you know, a, a, a South Sider. I guess what you would call collector. a cholo. Yeah. A cholo or whatever. Yeah. But cholo is not Mexican or no, brown. That doesn't have to be yeah. necessarily affiliated with being Mexican. No, I think you could be down with the South Sider. Yes, sir. And you could go into jail and then you could be white, black. You, I've seen black cholos. Like there's a, in, in, in my neighborhood, there was this black cholo and they used to call him Chibo. Bro, Asian cholos. Yeah, I've seen Asian. We all, yeah, we all had the Japan. one. We all, exact, we all had the one, <laughs> by some fact, <laughs> we all had that one homie, Asian homie. Korean. Who, who, Koreans, Filipinos, who kicked it with us and was a little hood, was a little cholo. This so, is some bullshit. Yeah, so the dick of the week is all the people that hated on Shia LaBeouf for, for doing a fucking role, Brown being a great face. actor or whatever, or trying to... Play a role or do his fucking job as being an actor. Fuck you, because he's just doing his fucking job. Even though and the, he's doing it well. The movie, the fact that the movie was good, that's uh, here, here or there, but irrelevant. But, but the, irrelevant. The movie can be garbage. But. but but at the end of the day, like if you look at the comments that I've seen, us Mexicans, we don't give a fuck. And Shia LaBeouf gets a pass anyways. We love him. We rock with him. <laughs> we don't give a fuck. Like we're not gonna be fucking talking about like. Oh, yeah, like, fuck, dude, no, this boycott. This, uh, Mexicans don't have fucking time to boycott anybody besides <laughs> grapes. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, we, the only thing we boycott is grapes, dog, and fucking blueberries and shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we boycott for the greater good. <laughs> exactly. We're not worried. We're not going to get our feelings hurt because, I mean, I, you know, it's a lot different. I'm not, I mean, this is apples to oranges, but at the end of the day, don't try to make something into something that's nothing. Hey, maybe it was a political stunt to make you watch the movie because I did definitely watch the movie. You haven't watched it yet, but you need to watch it. I'm gonna. It. Yeah. It, it's, it's, you know, my interpretation of the movie is, you know, it was a pretty decent movie. It wasn't the greatest movie of all time. It, to me, I, I, I fucking consider it like the Boogie Nights of fucking cartel movies. It's, you know, it was kind of corny. cheesy cartel movie. Yeah, it was kind of corny, and, but, um, you know, and I wish, you know, uh, you know, Shia LaBeouf is not the main actor in the movie, so I mean, I wish I, 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 I he could have played like the more of the lead. You know, I think in when more. I mean, Shia his... LaBeouf is just a great actor in general. I love. I'm Shia gonna LaBeouf. say that here. Yeah, I, lo- I like him. I love him. Ever since Even yeah. Stevens, and, the Mexicans are down with Even Stevens, bro. And 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 I've known people like Shia LaBeouf in that movie. Yeah, like uh, like what was it called? Uh, what was his name in the movie? Uh, fucking Creeper. Yeah, I know Creepers. I know Creepers in uh, all around. I grew up with Creepers. The white dudes that grew up with Mexicans. And then just fucking have their socks really high. They just fuck with Arasa. They like wearing long shorts with high, uh, so- high, so- high white and, socks. And they fucking do it because of the chicks. And they fucking, <laughs> they love the fucking adrenaline. They love to fucking be badass. And they're fucking cowboys, you know what I mean? And that's what, that's what it is. At know? the end of the day, when we're talking about people being represented in film, which is important. Yeah. You know, Latinos, people of color, bio PC, by POC being featured and represented in, in films, this is not the fucking battle we're here to fight on this hill for. And just because you're a cholo, like I said, cholo is not a race, you know? You know what I mean? It's Mexican's like, not even a race. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we found that out really quick. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, be a cholo. Like, like if, there's cholos all around the world, and we all know that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, uh, so it's like, to me, I don't take that personal. It's, uh, it's uh, the... the, the the attributes of his character from what I had gathered, obviously I haven't watched the movie yet, yeah. but you have. The attributes I gathered from his character aren't attributes that are solely s- exclusive to people who are Latino or Mexican or brown. I and think, they, you know, what the only thing about that movie was I think that, that they had a good story plot in line. It's yeah. just I think they rushed it. Yeah. I think they run out of money or they're just trying to fucking finish it quick. Yeah. But I think if they would have set, you know, set some time, it could have ended it, differently. It not, not, not even the end. The end it was great or whatever. 
But uh, I, I think I think they needed a little. They needed a marinade. Like mm. you needed a little bit more time to make the main character. Uh, it's like you don't have enough character build. Development. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't have enough time to character build. It. Yeah, like they didn't have enough time to character build. Uh, everybody that was a real po- uh, critical point right. in the movie, which is like Creeper and the main actor, and you know everybody that was everybody had good roles. It just didn't have enough time to to build those characters right. and let, get you humanize them. Yep. You know, I mean, I, that, that was my only critic criti- criticism of the movie is that criticism criticism is that <laughs> criticism. We're making new criti- words here. Making a word. Price <laughs> criticism. Um, and my only criticism is that is that. I didn't, I, they didn't get to get humanized, you know? Like, yeah. Like, you know, when you look at movies like Training Day, they really took time. Oh, to build to the To marinate yeah. that age character. You learned who Denzel Washington was oh. as a character. Mm-hmm. And it was through, it wasn't rushed. It was eased into. Yeah. It was built, right? Yeah. And I think this is kind of like in that same vein of movie, you know? Yeah. Or even like um, End of Watch. Mm. End of Watch is a, is, a, is a Latino movie too, right? It yeah. was the directors of Latinos in that. I believe so. Pais uh, Effect. Pais Effect, but... Uh, but that movie I had to watch, um, great fucking movie, right? Yeah. You had a chance to fall in love with the the, the, the cops, right? Yep. And get to know their families and who they were. You because know? there was multi-layered, multi-dimensional people. Exactly. Which is what people are in general, but yeah. obviously it's hard to do in two hours for a movie. Two hours in a movie. But, yeah. but I think they just rushed it. Yeah, They try sense. to get it out, stream it, whatever, yeah, fast. Makes sense. And I think, it, you know, someone like Shia LaBeouf, is, which is just a big name, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, fucking... You know, Transformers. Come that on. food's also from Echo Park. Yeah. Like, like Echo Park is a culture in and of itself. He's Echo Parque, you know? Yeah, I read the comments of all the people talking about, like, you know, made the big old statement. Like, yo, this was doing brown face. Like, and I read the comments like, oh, fuck that. I, I, that fool's down. I like that fool. He's down. That fool's, <laughs> from, that fool's from Echo Parque, dog. He gets a green light. He gets, he gets a pass, you know, or whatever. <laughs> and then oh, they'll be like, oh, you know what? Like, that fool fucking loves fucking wearing his socks high since I met him, you know, like back in the day, you know, like, <laughs> like he, dude, his dad's a Mongol, you know, whatever, all these, these things, you like, you hear all these things. I right? mean, if we're putting Shia LaBeouf up there, then we, we're going to have to have a conversation about Nacho Libre and Jack Black. Yeah, Jack Black. I mean, <laughs> come on, bro. I mean, that fool's or the Mexican. not Mexican there was and a he's a, a luchador from Mexico. Well, there's a movie called The Mexican and it was Brad Pitt, you know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? Dang, like, but what's the movie but to me, with like, Steve Martin yo, and Martin? Short? Yo, when they make a movie about me, I want fucking, you know, uh, fucking, what's his name to fucking play me? What's the guy from Catch Me If You Can? Uh, uh, uh the one from fucking, um, come on, Wall Street? Uh, no, Wall Street. Jonah fucking. Hill? No, 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 no. Well, maybe him too, but uh, he's a good actor. <laughs> um, fucking, um, I don't know, fucking Tom Cruise. I fucking Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. <laughs> I'll be like a blonde Tom Cruise and shit. Blonde, okay. blonde Cruise. You know what I mean? He's a good actor. He can fucking pull it off, right? There you go. Yeah, fucking you can like pull him. off the, the <laughs> treasure trove of a person that You doesn't have to be Mexican because you're a good actor. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know. I just think this is not the fucking hill I'm going to die on. Yeah, exactly. Like, if we're going to actually have a conversation about brown face or black face or whatever, POC but, face, but is there then a brown it's face? not going to be him. But is there a brown face? I think there can be. I think Jack Black was... Brown face. You think that was brown? Face? I think it was brown face. But did anyone get mad because at it? Because that's different to me. Wait, but did anyone get mad that, at it? That's different to me than the way they used to depict movies of like African Americans and Asians in movies. It's yeah. way different. Yeah, because it was it was very stereotypical generaliz- generalizations. It was. I mean, it was there, There's brown voice. But brown and face. Like, yeah, sabes que fool, like what? Dude? Or, or, You're talking or, about brown voice. Si, señor. Or, sabes que or like Spree Gonzalez or yeah. something like that. I mean, but brown face? I don't know. I've yeah. never really seen that in a movie yet. Yeah. I don't know. Jack Black played a Mexican. Dead ass. Dead ass. Shia LaBeouf, was he a Mexican in the movie? But he also played a, a poke, a poke, uh, what is it? Po- a pope? Po- po- uh, what is it? Polish? Was it polka? A polka singer? Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. On Netflix, there's a movie where he's a polka singer. It's Pice of X. <laughs> no, no, there is not. It's not Pice of X. And he does that too. So is that is that fucking polka face or whatever? Is that I Polish face? I don't know. I get the idea of representation, but once again, I'm I'm choosing my fucking battles. And and yeah. this isn't one of them. Yeah, exactly. And we and I don't think as as Latinos as a, as a whole, we don't give a fuck shit about that. You know? <laughs> we let Jack Black get a pass. Yeah. No one ever talked about that yeah. ever. Like if you talk, because it shit, was funny. If you talk about the Chivas or the fucking you know like our soccer team, we're gonna fight you know what I mean like throwing hands yeah you know I mean we're throwing hands or you're yeah. a baseball team or whatever or like <laughs> or like you know we'll, we'll march for fucking you know to so, boycott blueberries yeah blueberries and strawberries but we're not gonna fucking brown face 
the fuck out of here, dog. <laughs> Pass me a fucking cold one and let's go back to work, yo. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, my God. This is it. This dick of the week. Thank Look, you, you, you dickheads, for trying to make something happen that would, that's not even going to happen, bro. Like, don't try to make that happen, bro. I'm sorry, bro. I'm all about political justice and shit, but... And racial equity all day. Yeah, but don't try to make something happen. That's just not my hill. This ain't my hill. You can nah, have that hill. You can have that. Yeah. Thank you all for tuning on in. This is episode 10. We're at 10. 10. This is our 10th 10. episode. That's why we're taking shots. We're celebrating. We're celebrating. <sighs> we're halfway through. We're going to be here. Eddie. Halfway through. We only, we only got 20 episodes total. We're doing <laughs> No, no. I'm talking we're, half, we're halfway through this bottle. Oh, shit. We're going to be here editing film, coming up with new fucking topics. All day. Salud. Salud. Until next time. Until next time. Stay grow. My name is Vic. Stay grow. <laughs> Keep growing. Stay grow. <laughs> My name is Vic. I'm goodness, yo. Keep growing. Keep with the growing. greenhouse. Salud. Again, otra vez. Not enough love in the world. <laughs> Till next time. <laughs>